Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something really cool today from SK Hynix. It's a solid state drive. Many years ago, let's see, uh, hard drives looked like this. This is about 20 years old and this is uh, 1,281.9. Very important to get that 0.9 in there. Megabytes. And that's what they look like. They had the old IDE interface. And this is about 20, let's see, 1999. So 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. I've got some older ones than that around here too. Why I hang on to them, I don't know. This one is from around 2011 and this is 160 gigabytes. So you can see the size has certainly changed. And then they moved over to a SATA type of interface. And a few years later, again, this is 2011, a few years later, they really exploded with half terabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte. I know they've got over 16 now, but these were developed a few years ago. These aren't new by any means, but they've sort of uh, changed the game when it comes to storage. Now that the pricing has come down and the capacities have gone up. This is a one terabyte unit. And uh, the box doesn't really have anything on it as far as specs or anything interesting. Like everything you need to know is pretty much right there. And SK Hynix is a very famous chip maker. So there's what it looks like. It's amazing how small these are. I mean, this is, this is really the size of a stick of gum. So they've gone from you know, a hard drive like this years ago. And actually the ones that are older, and I can't remember where I put it, but they're actually much larger than this if you go back far enough. And then they've come to this size. Going over some of the basic information here, the first thing that will really get your attention uh, are the read and write speeds. So it's rated at up to 3,500 megabytes per second. And on the right, it's up to 3,200 megabytes per second. So the numbers are pretty close there between the read and write. And this is really an exercise in SK Hynix doing everything themselves. Pretty much, if you look at some of the information on this little slide, uh, the big thing that jumps out to me is the 128 layers of the NAND. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, 3D NAND devices, uh, they have multiple layers and they're stacked on top of each other and they're tiny little vertical channels that sort of connect them. And uh, for a while there, there were 32 layers, 48, 64, uh, 96 layers was at one point a really big deal. And now we're up to 128 on this particular device. So that's pretty impressive. We also have uh, PCIe uh, 3.0, the NVMe interface there is 3.0 which is good. Uh, and again, SK Hynix is using a lot of their own proprietary information and technology here to develop this. And as far as the warranty goes, you've got a five-year warranty and uh, it's amazing here. We've got 750 terabytes written. That's impressive. Now, one thing I find very interesting, if I can zoom in here, if you look at the label there, it says biodegradable packaging at least 90% degradation within 180 days. So that's nice to see they're being uh, responsible and not dumping more plastic into the landfills. And I do think it's really nice that a manufacturer takes the uh, recyclable packaging or biodegradable packaging, I should say. Uh, seriously, that's very refreshing. Now, one thing when I'm handling uh, stuff that's sensitive to electrostatic discharge, memory, and uh, hard drives like that. I try to make sure I use my anti-static wrist strap, and then it's connected to the post here, it clips on there, and then this frame is grounded back here over to the table, and I verified that, the, uh, that there's continuity there for the ground. Now, I'm in the springtime, the humidity is fairly high, so it's probably not that big of a deal. In the winter, it really is when you take two steps and you touch something and you get the shock from the static discharge. But anyway, it's never a bad idea to wear 
a wrist strap and these things only cost a few dollars anytime you're working with electronics so when it comes to installing these drives you need to look and uh, see what your motherboard manufacturer says for your particular model as to where your m.2 slots are so in this motherboard they're sort of hidden there's one here and there's one underneath this cover these are little heat sinks uh, there was a time when some of these early models not this particular one but uh, they really cranked out a lot of heat so you had to have a heat sink sometimes it was a good idea to have a fan blowing across your motherboard because these things got pretty toasty and then they would start to throttle and you would lose a little bit of speed and as a general rule again depends on the motherboard but the slot that's closest to your CPU is usually the one you want to try and use at least for your operating system drive if you're going to put your OS on your new M.2 drive and the reason I say that uh, you really need to look at the user manual is because sometimes depending upon the CPU and your chipset and all that good stuff uh, some of these M.2 slots will share bandwidth with a PCIe slot and you want to get the most bang for your buck so you want to use the M.2 slot that has the most bandwidth available so again consult with your uh, user manual and your motherboard manufacturer for that information and uh, I know that used to be the case with older motherboards and maybe a lot of the newer ones the bandwidth sharing is not such a big deal but anyway still look into it before you get your drive installed now I'll go ahead and get this uh, heat sink off of here and I already have the one screw out and always be careful when you use a screwdriver you don't want to drop it or push down hard and it slips off the screw and goes right across your motherboard that would not be good so there are a couple different approaches here so this little heat sink it actually has some double-sided sort of really sticky tape there and that's sort of like a thermal tape to help dissipate the heat to this little heat sink and uh, like I said some of the earlier drives had some heat concerns I don't know that this one does so the options are I can just put this one right in the slot and it should go in there nice and smoothly you shouldn't have to push very hard at all and of course it always wants to stick up a little bit now some of these little drives come with a, a single screw to attach it some don't this one I didn't see one in the box so I grabbed one out of the motherboard uh, box it actually came with a couple of these little screws so option number one is to use this little screw here and just screw this down and be done with it and not use this little heat sink or I can set the heat sink back on top and I don't use that little screw that I just showed you I actually go back and use uh, the screws that originally held the heat sink on because these are longer and uh, I should say they're long enough that I can get by with the thickness of that drive the screws will allow you to put the little heat sink back on top if you want to go that direction and you know actually the more I the more I think about it here that screw is not quite lining up you know I think I'm just going to go ahead I'm not even going to put that heat sink on let's just see how this thing performs without it and if I need it later I can always add it that's probably a better way to look at it so let's see if I can get this little tiny screw in here on the first shot there we go all right so we'll take a look at it see if it's uh, getting hot and, and what will happen when these things get really hot they'll start to throttle and they'll uh, choke back on your speed maybe uh, it's enough for you to notice it maybe not but anyway it's easy enough to put that back on one thing I sort of blew right over when I took it out of the box uh, it actually has this is your warranty information it has a five-year warranty which is pretty nice and then the user instructions here uh, they're pretty basic they're in several languages but it basically says what I was saying earlier about the anti-static be careful and it shows you how to push the drive in and use a little screw there to hold it down so nothing to
too exciting there. The drive is all powered up and the first thing I do is I go into disk management. Now there are other ways to do this but I like using disk management. So it sees the disk, it's ready to initialize it. The default is GPT mode there and you can look up the difference between MBR and GPT but since my system, uh, the disk that I'm using for my C drive is already in GPT then I'm going to go ahead and uh, stay in that mode. And then I come over here and Oops, click the OK. And then the next thing I do is, since it's unallocated, I need to create a new simple volume. Stick with the defaults. And that's all good. And there you go. That's all I have to do. And then I just open a file explorer, drill down to this PC, and there we go, the new D drive is ready to go. And if you need to move your data over from your main drive over to this new drive, uh, you can do that very easily with this free and easy data migration tool from Macrium. Now I will get the thermal camera out and we'll look at the temperatures at idle with no load, nothing's really happening. Temperature in the room is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's take a look. All right, so we'll take a quick look at idle. We're running around 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. And that's with no load, so we will get it rolling here with a load on it. All right, so now I'm doing some stress testing. And you can see the temperatures have definitely popped up over idle. So it looks like we're getting close to 60 degrees Celsius. And it looks like the hot spot is right in that area there. These are the first two runs of Crystal Disk Mark. And you can see the numbers are pretty close between the two and we're hitting numbers that the uh, SSD is advertised to uh, run at. So we'll go ahead and get a third run in here just to sort of confirm our numbers and see what that looks like. And keep in mind, uh, normally you won't see those temperatures for just everyday use. Uh, if you are moving a lot of data back and forth uh, without any rest in between, yeah, you'll probably see some temperatures creep up. Usually though, uh, there should be plenty of airflow in your case uh, to keep things cool. You can uh, always add another case fan. They also make little aftermarket coolers for these uh, solid state drives too. And I'll be checking a couple of those out here uh, very soon. So this is the third run of Crystal Disk Mark. There's the version I'm using. And uh, I'll compare this to the other two runs that I just did. And then when this is done, I will fire up Addo and compare the temperatures there that I'm seeing with Crystal Disk and see if there's any difference. And of course, here are the results from the third run of the Crystal Disk Mark. And uh, again, the numbers are pretty consistent. And now Addo is running. I know I said I was gonna run three passes on this, but uh, I think one pass is probably enough. And then the temperature is there. Uh, it's 47, 51. I'll kind of monitor that as the test progresses and we'll see where that ends up. All right, so the testing is almost done. You can see the numbers have pretty much leveled off when it's moving bigger chunks back and forth. The temperature there is about, about where it was uh, on the last test. And uh, since the thermal camera was reporting a very similar temperature, well, it spiked a little higher. Uh, I trust that the thermal camera is pretty close. And that's the end of the testing. And like the numbers from the Crystal Disk Mark testing, these also look good. So it looks like Addo and Crystal Disk show that the numbers that the drive is putting down are consistent with what it's advertised. So the speeds look good. Right now you can get this for $134.99 on Amazon.
decent price for a one terabyte drive that can move things around at those speeds. So I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. And coming up next, we'll stress test this drive again, but we're going to put a couple of different M.2 coolers on there, SSD coolers, and see if these make any difference. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.